Hi, I'm Superintendent of Public Instruction, Chris Rakedon. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. We had a great response last week. I wanted to speak from the bottom of my heart last week and tell you how much uh, I think the contribution of educators and family members and students has been to our efforts in the state of Washington. It's a tough moment. It, it remains a tough moment. Uh, last week, we said we'd come back and answer some questions from parents and students, and boy, do we have some good ones, uh, some really tough questions and, and some kind of fun. Stick around to the very end because the ultimate question that people are asking is really about are we coming back to school and I want to make sure that we talk about that uh, and be pretty candid with you and transparent as uh, I think that's really important from uh, anyone who represents you. The other thing I want to make sure we kick off here is we're at home a lot right now and we probably never had a moment in our history where so many people are forced to be home. But we've also had our census uh, cards come home and you've been notified about this. The census is so important. It's how we document everyone in the state of Washington who lives here. It drives resources for our state and provides opportunities for us financially. Uh, it's important we all fill it out. You can do it online now. It's really simple. I've done it. I really want to encourage you to go to Census 2020 and make it happen. Look through your mail. Something's come uh, to your home and please fill out the census in this process. Uh, other than that, I'd say let's get started on some questions that have come in. We start with a question from Ellie and Anna. They're both juniors, and they ask, what happens with state tests and AP classes? What about the SAT and the ACT? Uh, Ellie and Anna, what we know right now is the SAT and the ACT are putting off their timeline. Uh, you're juniors, so this is a big deal to you. This would normally be when you're uh, taking those assessments, but they've moved those dates out and they will be provided down the road for sure. AP classes for the most part are moving forward. Uh, a lot of teachers have already been re-engaged. Students are in those classes and learning. And I know AP plans on shrinking the assessment this year, allowing students to take it from home and try to do it all within a 45 minute assessment. So uh, look into that yourself, contact your school and your teacher and make sure that you have an AP test option. But uh, SAT and ACT, they're gonna be pushed out for a little while longer and, and that opportunity will come up much later in the spring. Another question came in here from Sophia. Uh, She's a 12th grader, and a lot of parents have this question too. Alexander, Sunshine, Penny, Jen, a lot of people ask this question. Will our seniors still graduate, and how does the closure affect graduation requirements? This is a question we're getting a lot. Our seniors are going to graduate. They have requirements by the state for certain credits, and those are moving forward, and they're being engaged. Teachers are gonna make independent decisions about uh, those students and their knowledge and their ability to meet standards. And our State Board of Education is poised to waive some of those credits for students who absolutely need that. But it does require a good faith effort. We can't just put our pencils and pens down and say, hey, we're done. We gotta work through this. Seniors, I'm counting on you to keep learning. I know you're ready to go, and normally this would be springtime and senioritis. I need you to double down on learning um, to make sure that you're gonna graduate successfully. We are all very, very committed to this. Uh, but this is a big moment for us, so keep working hard and make sure that you're contacting your school if you've not heard from them and say, what do I have to do to graduate? They will have a plan for you. Next question comes in from, again, a lot of students, Bella and Logan and Avery and Natalie. Uh, those are all high school students, uh, but they uh, either have parents or some other parents. Megan, Lori, and Robin have all asked, how will our grades be affected by this? What schools, uh, will schools switch to a pass-fail system? Grading classes is up to local school districts. There's no statutory authority for that to be done at a statewide level. Each district will make that decision. For kindergarten through eighth graders, it's pretty straightforward. They're gonna look at student progress and make sure they understand uh, the effectiveness of the, of the teaching and learning and whether students are, are ready to move on. And they're gonna move on, I'm confident of that. Those grades don't tend to have the same risk as say the high schoolers. So you ninth to twelfth graders, your district's gonna decide on whether or not to have uh, letter grades continue forward or to have a pass no credit system. But higher education has a lot to say about this because some of you really want those GPAs for scholarships and other things, so please contact your local school district and figure out what their plan is. Here's one, how will schools continue to provide accommodations in my child's IEP? Crystal, Kathy, and Michelle, thanks for the question. Uh, if your student has a disability and has an individualized education plan, uh, your school district is prepared to move forward on those. A lot of those are being done at a distance right now. They're happening over conferences uh, at a distance, and I would encourage you, if you've not heard from your school, to contact them and make sure you're diving into that IEP. This is new, this is hard, and we're committed to compensatory services if we can't get everything done in the IEP now, but those should be moving forward. We've got some fun questions here. Uh, Austin, age seven, says, would you rather jump into a pool of chocolate pudding or a pool of jello. That's a no-brainer, Austin. I'm a chocolate guy, and I hope you are too. Make that happen for yourself. 
Uh, another one, this is uh, Jack, age five. He says, um, I really like being the boss. Do you like being the boss of schools? <laughs> this is a tough one, Jack, because being the boss means hard decisions, and that leads us to our last question. Are we coming back to school this year for this? We have to go to the whiteboard. Let's take a look here at the reality of our situation. <clears throat> We've got a pretty serious health issue going on in the United States right now. We've got time that's not on our side right now. We started right here back in February or so with no cases. And I'm gonna give you an example of a state like New York. New York has had an incredible peak. New York's only three times our population, but New York has 10 times the number of uh, lost lives and 14 times the number of cases. That's not the situation we wanna be in. Instead, we know in our state that there's a certain level of health care that we can provide to keep people safe. That's our line. You've heard everybody say flatten out the curve. We started about the same time, and right now our goal is to never get above that health care capacity line. But if you notice, in order to do that well, it takes longer. So here we are in school right now. The governor was hoping to have us back here. That's going to be a little bit tough to do. He's going to make a decision soon about that. We have to make sure we get past this peak, and there's a good chance that that's going to happen out here very late spring. I don't know if we're coming back to school this year, and I want to be honest about that. It's going to be really tough to do because we want to make sure people are safe. And if we rush back to school and put all of us in tight classrooms and bring everyone back into our buildings, there's a chance that our caseload peaks back up again, and that would absolutely be the worst thing for public health. So the governor's gonna make that decision. I will support that decision. Um, I think you should expect to be in this distance learning model for quite a long time. Uh, that's the honest truth, and we'll keep you up to date as we know that. The other question that comes out of this all the time is what about lost learning time? So I wanna make sure you understand kind of the overall impact here of what's possibly going on. So this question of when we come back is a one we don't know for sure and, and the governor will make a tough decision, but that leads to another question that comes up all the time. How much learning loss is going on? And again, our goal is to make sure there's continuous learning and districts are getting better and better at this literally every week. We're connecting more students, we're getting more devices out there. Sometimes it's paper packets, but we're gonna get better and better at this. But let's do the math about the entire question of how much time do we spend in school and how much are we losing. In the state of Washington, a kindergarten through eighth grader is expected to go about a thousand hours a year in learning. That's eight, that's 9,000 hours over the course of kindergarten through eighth grade. A ninth through a 12th grader is expected to go 1,080 hours for a grand total of 4,320 hours. 13,320 hours of total learning opportunity in the state of Washington. We have an incredible system that guarantees education for everyone age five all the way to basically age 18. That's a lot of time in school. Right now, based on when we had our closure in the middle of March, even if it extended all the way to June 19th, students can expect to lose something around 325 hours. That is 2.4% to your entire education system. And I don't intend it to even be a percent. We're gonna keep learning through this period. We're gonna work with the legislature and the governor. We're gonna figure out how to add additional hours uh, next year and perhaps the year after that to try to make sure that instruction happens for everybody. Remember the whole country's in this position, 50 million kids across the country. And we're actually a little ahead of the curve based on our conversations around the nation. So I think we're gonna be very competitive. I think we're gonna do a great job of this, but we have to be patient right now. Uh, we're gonna to try to shrink that 2.4% to something much smaller. Seniors, that's why we've doubled down on you. We know you don't have a lot of time to make this up, so we're doing everything we can to know your requirements, to waive what we can, to get you graduated and get you onto your next step. Those are the facts. Now, a question I wish I was asked. What is the deal with all the toilet paper people are trying to purchase? Again, you gotta go to the whiteboard. 1.2 trillion calories are consumed by America every single day. A bunch of those calories have shifted from fast food and restaurants to grocery stores because let's face it, we can't sit down in those places. But we still only consume 1.2 trillion calories as a whole nation. That's the same amount of waste. We don't need more toilet paper, so please, if you're going to the grocery store, get those essentials. Save the toilet paper for somebody who doesn't have it. Let's be toilet paper kind. Let's spare a square. 
Take care, everybody. We will see you next week with more questions, especially from educators who have a lot on their mind. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend.